Hey, good morning, everyone. Um, I wanted to go over this today. Today, we're going to look at two different of uh, these uh, CK12s. We're going to look at 1.24 and 1.25. 1.24, um, we're looking at the International System of Units, also called the uh, SI or System International. These are the units that are used in the scientific community all over the globe. So it's like this universal language. Um, people think the universal language is love. Maybe it is, but uh, this is also the universal language in terms of science. Um, if you look down here, uh, they, they talk about initially um, when we're talking about length, it's going to be the meter. So here, let's let's highlight this. Um, they talk about the measurement, sorry, the measurement used by most scientists, engineers is the international or SI. Uh, and there's seven basic units. And a couple we're going to look at today are going to be the meter and uh, the kilogram. Okay. SI units are easy to use because they're all based on units of 10. So it's, it's very easy to, to multiply or divide because it's, you're using tens, unlike the, uh, the, the American system um, where, um, and that's not the correct name for it, I can't think of it, but um, you know, it, it's really strange stuff. You got 12 inches to a foot, three foot feet to a yard, um, what, 1,760 yards to a mile, really, you know, difficult numbers to remember. These are all base 10, so life's easy. Now, if you look over here, they give you the prefixes. So these prefixes have meaning. Kilo means a thousand. So a kilometer would be a thousand meters, right? A thousand meters. That would make sense to you, right? Um, I like that. Um, let's go with that. Uh, then they go into a decimeter, which is going to be uh, one tenth of a meter. That means one tenth. Uh, centa. Centa, like century, there's a hundred. Uh, a centimeter is one one hundredth of a meter. One one hundredth. So there's a hundred meters within a, uh, uh, sorry, there's a hundred centimeters within one meter. Um, millimeter, that's one one thousandth of a meter. So in one meter stick, you have a thousand millimeters. Um, so milli means one one thousandth. And they go down here, you've got a, uh, micro or a micrometer, and that's one one millionth. You can see that um, in terms of uh, the decimal. So uh, one one millionth. And then the final one, at least we're going to look at here, is uh, the nanometer. And the nano, all right, so if you if you would count this, you go all the way over to nine place values from the, uh, from the decimal point, um, and that's one one billionth. So extremely small. Uh, unit used to uh, to measure length. Uh, they go through here some questions. I don't think we need to go over this. Then they give you unit conversions to the uh, English system. Okay, so there's the name, the, the uh, basic English system. Um, I honestly don't think at this time it's necessary for us to go over this. Uh, if you're interested, by all means, look through this and... Um, you can play these videos here that show how to do the conversions, which you're going to use when you go to the high school. Um, you do conversions um, in chemistry and, and even in physical science. Okay, so that's 1.24. Uh, if I go to 1.25, now they're looking at measure uh, scientific measuring devices. Um, and uh, let me kind of scroll down through here. Uh, we said measuring length with a metric ruler. We did this previously. We did this a couple days ago. Um, so we know that if these are centimeters here, so one, two, three, four, those are four centimeters. Um, if you look in between, if you look in between from here to here, there's, there's 10 smaller units, and those are called your millimeters. So there's 10 millimeters in every centimeter. Um, so if you had to look at this number, at this line right here, it's not quite three centimeters. It would actually be 3.2 centimeters, 3.2 centimeters right there. Um, if they asked you for the unit in terms of millimeters, 
Well, we know there's 10 in every centimeter, so that'd be 10 and 20 and 30, 31, 32. So this line, this red line here would be 32 millimeters, okay? Uh, we're gonna look down here. This is the triple beam balance. There's a whole separate video on how to use a triple beam balance. I know we used it in sixth and in seventh grade. Um, so it's gonna review, be a review for most of you. However, um, for students who are brand new or are uh, sixth graders, uh, it'll be a, uh, you know, an introductory. So um, they, I'm not gonna kind of go over this point. You can read through this, but my video um, shows you. So not only will it give you the steps, on how to measure mass using a triple beam balance, but it will also um, uh, show you exactly how to do that, okay? Um, I'm gonna scroll down here, and um, boy, it's really tough to see, but maybe you can see this right here. Maybe I can control, make this bigger. Yeah, control plus, control plus, there we go. Okay, so does that help? Maybe. Okay, so if you look at this, uh, there's three beams. That's how it gets the name, triple beam balance. Um, and these things are called the riders. So let's say I, I, I had up here, I had this object that I put here. Um, and I already had this calibrated. And when I put this on here, I have to move the riders. And I know that I have the correct amount when this balance mark lines up over here. And don't worry, there's a video on that. But once you've identify that and you have all the writers in place then you have to add them up you have to add them up so initially if you're brand new to this you may have to actually get a piece of paper and write it down and then add it up make sure you obviously line up your decimal points but uh, for this if you would look at this you'd say one writer's at 300 and then this one's at 30 and then if you look at this this is at 5 so 300 and 30 and 5. So if you add all those up, you would say that object that was on the pan of the triple beam balance, it has a mass, mass, not weight. We'll get into that. It's mass. It's how much matters within an object. It has a mass of 335 grams. All right, 335 grams. Um, and that's how you, you go through this. Um, oh, I like this here. Well, never mind. I'm, I'm going to keep going. And uh, they go through this and they s tell you a little bit more. And there's the electronic balances and you'll have those at the high school. And if you go over to IV or off away to, to college or in, in the workplace. Um, and the last thing they have here, and I got to make this maybe a little bit. Well, I guess it's good when it's larger like that, except my face is larger. Um, measuring volume with a graduated cylinder. So we've, we've looked at the graduated cylinders and we know um, if we're gonna find liquid volume, we would use uh, a graduated cylinder. And um, the, the only thing I have not mentioned to you yet is if it's a glass graduated cylinder, um, water has, has a property that's called um, adhesion. It's both adhesive and it's cohesive. Um, adhesion means it sticks to things other than water, okay? And it has an affinity towards glass. So when you fill up a graduated cylinder and you look at it at eye level, a lot of times you're gonna see this curvature, this curvature. And this curvature is called the meniscus, right here. This is called the, the meniscus. Oops, I don't wanna do that. Um, now, where do you measure? Because if you look at this example here, they're showing this person. I don't want to have that. Um, here's the eye, so you have to get it eye level. And look, there's there's two different places. There's here at the bottom of the meniscus, and there's also along the sides of the glass. Well, what you will do, you always measure from the bottom of that curvature of that meniscus. So here would be an example, how many milliliters of water is in this graduated cylinder here? Well, if that's 60 and that's 70, so that'd be 61, 62, 3, 4, 5, 6, 67, right? So that's 67. So you'd say there's 67 milliliters of water in this graduated cylinder. Now, some kids would say, oh, maybe there's 68 because 
they're looking along the sides, but you do not do that. You look at the bottom of the meniscus for the to to know to record how much uh, the liquid volume. Uh, okay, you can look through these these videos. These are very good. I like them. Um, they should play for you fine. Um, and that's that's pretty much it. This is a nice little review. Cool. All right. Uh, now I would like you to do the practice, which is down here. If I can move my face out of the way, which I can't. Um, nope. Uh, down here, there's going to be the practice. So please do the practice, um, just like you're supposed to do for 1.24. Do it for 1.25, and then click the button up here that will say uh, turn in. It's a red button. Turn it in, and then make sure you also mark it done on Classroom. All right. Good luck. Thanks. Bye.